Hello viewers, my name is Fabian and today I'd like to show you my homemade DIY fireworks firing system. So if you're not very familiar with it, the purpose of a fireworks firing system is to shoot off fireworks remotely or electronically from a safe distance. Uh, and this also works in the favor of professional fireworks display operators because you don't want to be shooting off large caliber fireworks uh, in close proximity to them. You want to be at a safe distance. So hence the purpose of these uh, nice remote controllers. Now there are several manufacturers of commercial grade fireworks firing systems. There's a company called Fire One. They've been in the market for a long time. There's Cobra Firing Systems. There's also a newer company called FireTech. Uh, those are just a few names to go around. The problem with these manufacturers for a DIY or a hobbyist, uh, fireworks enthusiasts, is they are very prohibitively expensive uh, in the 500 to 1000 plus dollar range. And more money for that means less money for fireworks, especially uh, for us backyard guys that are just doing this for our family and friends. So since I'm an electrical engineer by day trade and I do love fireworks as a side hobby, I have made my own DIY firing system. Um, everything you see here is completely made from scratch uh, with the caveat of a few off-the-shelf components inside uh, these uh, the remote controller here and the field module uh, and so yeah I'd like to give you an overview and show you how it works uh, this is a two-part system as I've just kind of demonstrated there is a wireless remote controller with a membrane button keypad here and an LCD screen or OLED screen be specific and there's a little key switch right here for the power so when you power it on there's some lights flash there's a little splash screen that shows the uh, version number of the software and the name and then uh, this is what the user interface looks like so this button on the left here you can select which bank you're set to and essentially what that means is the bank number is what bank of eight channels you are firing so on the field module right here this can fire 64 fireworks independently or 64 channels uh, hence you can see here channels 8 times 8 64 so it's got eight RGA 45 Ethernet type ports uh, the same that you would find on your wall in your home uh, for internet except I'm not using it to transfer any kind of data protocol or anything it's strictly for power um, that's why they are these metal shielded type Ethernet ports because I'm using shielded Ethernet cable or CAT6 cable uh, to pass the power through the cable. Uh, so that plugs into one of these ports like so. And, and as I said, these are individual firing banks of eight. And so here on the remote, you can select that right here. So if I have it set to bank zero, and go back to bank or bank one, for example, if I hit bank one and arm the system and fire off channel one on bank one, that is actually going to be channel 16 over here or whatever I have connected 16. Uh, so the field module connects to what are known as firing slats. And this is essentially just a breakout board. Uh, it has the same type of RJ45 plug here and it goes to eight of these uh, speaker terminal posts as you may have seen before or familiar with. And so that is actually what you plug what's known as a squib into or igniter. And that's what these guys look like. All it is is just a piece of two conductor wire. And on the end of it, there's a little magic compound that when you put electricity to it, it sparks and it shoots your firework off. Uh, these are known as fire wire initiators. And they are completely, it's a really wonderful product. They are completely legal to buy. You do not have to have any kind of professional fireworks license for um, they're a little bit expensive because uh, there's some hazmat fees in involved with shipping them to your door. But like I said, you don't have to have any license and they work great. All they do is they just produce a spark and you attach this to your fireworks fuse. Or there's a uh, way, a specific way that you can put them inside the firework to get it to trigger immediately as soon as you hit the button. And that's how you use them. So let me go ahead and turn the firing module on by pressing the on switch right here. 
It also has an arming key switch. So when the switch is in the up position like this, it makes a break, uh, breaks a nine volt power connection to the, the, the MOSFETs that are on the circuit board inside here. Um, and that physically cuts the power to the igniters. So in case of an emergency, if you had to shut everything off, you disarm the system and there will be no juice going down to this end at all. And that's a really nice uh, safety feature to have. It's got uh, three status indicator lights right here. It's got a uh, power switch, an arm switch, and a status LED. So the arm switch, if we turn this in the arm position here, and let's go ahead and arm the system by pressing the red arm button. You'll hear a little click, and that's the electromechanical relay in here. Now the system is fully armed, so when the remote receives the I'm armed uh, signal from the field module, it will arm itself, and then all of the cues or channels right here will show up green. And also we see the armed light on the uh, field module itself. Uh, the way this all communicates is there's uh, some radio modules inside each of these. Uh, they use a frequency band that uh, is unregulated by the FCC. It's a frequency band in the 400 to 900 megahertz band for industrial, scientific, and medical use. So it's also great for hobbyists as well to use. And there's just these little tiny screw-on SMA connector antennas. The brains inside each of these um, is a custom designed circuit board uh, that's powered by the same kind of chip that's on one of these, an Arduino, if you're familiar with those. That's, that's basically what I did, is I made my own Arduino on each of these circuit boards uh, and thrown in some power supply circuitry, some firing relays or MOSFETs on the field module uh, that will short the 9 volt battery power to the igniter. Uh, and also control which channel is going on, so kind of a matrix. And that's all that's going on, it's uh, very simple. And then, as I said, these are 3D custom designed 3D printed cases that I made in SolidWorks and uh, 3D printed on just a small, tiny 3D print. So if you look at the bottom of the field module here, you'll see I have some compartments that conveniently, you can swap out the batteries. There's one nine volt battery that powers the logic power, and there's two nine volt batteries that power the squib power, or igniter power. And there's also a little access port right here that I can get to a header and uh, reprogram this field module if necessary. So now let's get on to what you actually might wanna see, uh, this thing actually working. So let me turn off my light right here so you can perhaps see better. So right here on this slat right here, I just have two white LEDs plugged into channels one and two. And so, if I go to bank zero right here and I press one, you will see the LED flash. And if I press two, you will see that LED flash as well. And that would be firing off the actual igniter. And then uh, if you have a whole bunch of fireworks that are chained together for your finale, what you do you can press this other secondary red button right here and you can just completely fire everything off all at once. And so it's gonna ask you a confirmation question. Are you sure you wanna fire all channels? If you press no, that exits back to the main menu. If you press yes, you'll notice these flash instantaneously. Now you might have missed it, so let me try again. And actually, let me move this to a different port right here. So, fire all channels, and you can see the LEDs flashed instantaneously there. And now, if I go to my remote, you'll notice all the LEDs are off. Uh, and, and each of these eight LEDs on the bottom represents one channel or one cue. Another nice thing that you could do is you could also change how long the electrical current is applied to these E-matches um, by pressing the second button from the left here. That changes this number right here, and this represents your firing current time in seconds. So you can apply the electrical current for 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, or one second. Another feature I've also implemented so that you can kind of see if uh, the radios are communicating with each other very well or if there's good signal strength 
is every time the field module receives a command, if you look at the uh, status LED there, it will blink. And so if you're very far away from this and you see a flashing blue light, that, uh, that tells you that it, uh, it's receiving the signal and everything is working great. And that can also be uh, indicated here on the remote by the signal strength indicator. So this displays the signal strength of the last radio message that these received to each other. And so uh, the arming protocol, I have it so that uh, when you press the arm button on the remote, it will send an arming command to the field module. If the field module successfully arms itself, it will then send back a reply to the remote saying, hey, I'm armed, go ahead and arm yourself. So it's kind of a handshake, so to speak, so that uh, both of these are talking to each other and everything's successful. And another nice thing is that the arming switch here, if you have it in the off position or disarmed, uh, the remote controller will never receive an I'm armed command. So, see right now, it is not arming itself. So it knows that the field module is actually physically disarmed with this key switch. So this key switch kind of serves two functions. It disconnects the, uh, the, the high power for the squibs and also it tells the field module not to send the arming command. So let's actually go ahead and show you what the igniters look like going off. I will set that up and uh, then that kind of concludes everything. So yeah, these uh, slats are custom designed as well. Uh, I have eight of them made, so I could shoot off up to 64 fireworks. Uh, I have had a problem with these ethernet cables. Unfortunately, the design of the system um, makes it so that you can't really use a long cable to pass the power through because there's just so much of a voltage drop across this much cable that if you use a 25, 50, or 75 foot long shielded Cat6 cable, by the time that the current gets to the slat boards, um, there's gonna be so much of a voltage drop from a nine volt battery that it will not fire your squibs off. And I've noticed this before where I press the button on the remote and nothing has happened at all. So uh, it's best to use just short uh, three foot or six foot uh, Cat6 cables. And that kind of makes it tricky because you, you have to place all of your fireworks kind of in one centralized position out in the field. You can't have them spread apart uh, from each other more than six to eight feet, depending on uh, how long of a cable you're using. So that is kind of the, uh, the issue. A lot of other firing systems on the market have combated this by just selling you a field module that can shoot off eight channels or 18 channels, uh, a small number of channels, and the idea is you buy more than one of these field modules and then you can place them anywhere you want to out in the field. Now, obviously, again, the problem with that is that becomes very cost prohibitive because each of these field modules might run you $300 each. Uh, so that's what's nice about this is I can get full 64 channels out of it uh, of control. Um, and I think parts and labor and everything, what I spent on this, probably around $400. That's for the custom circuit boards. I already did on the 3D printer, so there's that uh, Catch-22 as well. Um, but it's custom circuit boards, the parts, uh, everything. And then everything is, is programmed, like I said, um, in the Arduino development environment. So that's uh, something I could show in another video, perhaps, uh, is how the software works for all you electronics enthusiasts out there. But uh, yeah, let's proceed to the actual squib test, and then that concludes this video.
and then that concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, comments, uh, any constructive criticism, input, please feel free to leave that in the video comments. And thanks for watching.